B2, I call the member for Karangamite. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Mr Deputy Speaker, today I rise to make a desperate plea to my own government in relation to the scourge of ice in our community. Uh, let me first say that the initiatives by our government in consultation with the states and the territories, the National Ice Task Force, have been incredibly important in terms of us combating this uh, dreadful uh, drug addiction, which is uh, causing so much grief to so many families. Uh, Mr Deputy Speaker, for many months now I've been speaking out for the need for long-term rehabilitation beds funding. Uh, back in uh, May, in, in an article, Henderson demands beds for ice addicts, uh, we've been crying out in the Karangamite community for more funding because we recognise that without the tools in the community to combat the demand uh, in relation to the drug, then we are not going to overcome this. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, in contrast to the Victorian government, which uh, seems to be only supporting community day stay, uh, I have been fighting for many months for uh, long-term rehabilitation funding. Uh, this is absolutely vital. Let me say it costs about double um, for someone to actually have uh, long-term rehabilitation beds compared to a day stay. But if I look at organisations like Foundation 61 and Rob Litsky in our region who are doing an incredible job, uh, to get over ice addiction can take up to six months or even more. And we need that concerted long-term rehabilitation to really make the difference. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, there is no doubt that in our community, ICE is playing a major role in an increase in community crime. This is a huge issue across the Ballerine, across Geelong, in the Surf Coast. I'm delighted with our Safer Streets program, $20 million to put into local CCTV uh, um, infrastructure to improve uh, um, community so uh, lighting and other infrastructure to make our community safer. It's an absolute disgrace that in recent applications to the Victorian government, not one community in my region was successful in obtaining funding for CCTV cameras. And we see uh, headlines like this, CCTV rejected on the front page of the Ocean Grove Voice. In, ba in the Ballerine and places like Ocean Grove, the traders are crying out for assistance and support. Uh, there has been a, a huge increase in the spate of robberies, whether it be the traders, break-ins in cars, in local homes, and uh, enough is enough. Uh, I'm also wanting to put on record again very strongly my disappointment that the state Labor government has breached a commitment to open the Queenscliff police station seven days a week. That was a commitment by Lisa Neville. That was a commitment by Daniel Andrews. They have not delivered. It will go to four days a week over summer, and that is it. That is a breach of the commitment that was made to provide more policing on the Ballerine and across our region. So, Mr Deputy Speaker, I want to commend the many people in my community who are working so hard to deal with issues of community safety. To the Ocean Grove Business Association, it was my pleasure to meet with them recently to talk about how we might be able to support them in the many ways that they, in the support that they need to make their community safer. I also want to mention Tony Francis and the work that he is doing, a local police officer, working with local community clubs and agencies, our local service groups, to spread the word about what we can do, do as a community to combat the scourge of ice. I particularly want to pay tribute to Senator Fiona Nash, who in June of this year joined with me uh, and uh, many others in the community in holding an ICE summit. I'm very pleased, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the work that we are doing at a local community level is resonating. But what we need now, in contrast to the Victorian government, is a serious commitment to funding. Uh, ICE is destroying so many lives. There are people on the waiting list waiting to get into Foundation 61 to the wonderful service that they provide. They're actually dying on the waiting list. Uh, we need more funding. Foundation 61 is looking for about at least an extra million dollars. We need more funding for long-term rehab beds. We need more funding for ICE, for drug and alcohol services. And uh, I am uh, looking forward, Mr Deputy Speaker, to our government's report on the National ICE Action Strategy 
and to the action that we need in our community to make our community safer. Thank you very much.